So hi, let's continue the review uh, about the earthquake. And now we're going to focus on the focus and the epicenter of the earthquake. So how are we going to define focus? The focus, or also known as the hypocenter, is the exact point inside the crust where a tremendous amount of energy actually starts to be released. So here in this picture, you'll see the example of a focus and directly above it, this is the ground, the crust, and directly above it is the epicenter. So focus is also where the uh, vibrating waves originate, uh, the travel outward in all directions. Since the seismic wave are in circular in position so it can travel outward whether going to north south east or west so the fossae or a plural for focus are found in various depths underground so let's measure it this uh, the earthquake depth ranges from zero to 700 kilometers and with this the fossae are found uh, different depths below the ground surface. Here are the measurements. So we consider that a shallow focus if the measurement of its depth is from 0 to 70 km below and intermediate if that is 70 to 300 km below and we consider it depth if that measures 300 to 700 km below the ground. So Look at this picture as an example of the depth of the focus. So in shallow, which is again 0 to 70 kilometers below, they are usually of large spread, resulting to more damages and their fossae are nearer the surface of the earth. However, these earthquakes are of smaller magnitudes, releasing less energy. In a deep, which is 300 to 700 kilometers below, there is a greater amount of energy being released. Next, after the focus on its depth, what about the epicenter, now located on the ground? So the point on the Earth's surface that is vertically above the focus and where energy waves are felt most strongly is called the epicenter. So it came from it came from the uh, Latin word epicentrum, which means situated at the center. It is worse, or it is where the first sudden movement of the ground is felt and where the most severe damages by an earthquake is sustained. So now we're done dealing with the focus on the epicenter. What about the tsunami? So the earthquakes also happened in or happen in the bodies of water, not only in the ground or continent, but also in the bodies of water. When the sea floor or the floor of the ocean moves due to the shifting and displacements of oceanic plates, then it may cause submarine earthquake or underwater earthquake. Like here in the picture, let's say the earthquake happens here in this particular ocean and then look the reaction of the uh, water as the ground moves so it pushes the water up and then moving it towards to the continent so let's take a look again of the uh, of how water rises during the earthquake just known as no. So as the ground move here, number one, then expect that it will make the water or the sea level up, then moving the water towards, creating a huge wave, moving towards to the ground. So the underwater earthquakes may cause tsunami. Tsunami is commonly called seismic waves which mislead the people who thought that only earthquakes are the sole cause of tsunami. I have here another animation showing the reaction of water as 
the earthquake strikes on the seafloor. And this is the possible thing to happen when the water rises much higher than the usual wave the sea or the bodies of water can create. So tsunamis are also caused by undersea volcanic eruption. Not only earthquake, but also undersea volcanic eruption. As well as if there is an underwater landslide, a glacier cliffs, land slumping into the ocean or even a meteorite impact. So it is incorrect to call it tidal waves because tsunami are not caused by tides and are unrelated to tides. So it originated from the word or the word shu, which means harbor, and yami, meaning waves. A tsunami happens when underwater earthquakes result in sudden vertical deformation of the seafloor, section of the Earth's crest under or near the ocean uh, rises or falls. So when the plate shifts upward, it pushes the water up and it forms a wave when the energy from the Earth's crest is transferred to the water. So the entire column of water is now disturbed, creating this wave. What's next? So the vertical displacement of the seafloor are triggered by thrust, faulting, or what we know as um, a reverse faulting or a transform faulting, even a normal faulting, where compression pushes the rock on one side of the fault up and our rock on the other side. So a magnitude 7 or 8 earthquakes cannot produce a tsunami unless they involve sudden vertical movement over a long area of a fault. So in this case, most damaging tsunamis occur in the Pacific Ocean where the ring of fire is known to be in the boundary or its boundary and in the Indian Ocean where there are two major subduction zones. So I hope you learned something from the review today. Thank you very much. Remember the different terms such as the focus, the epicenter, and even tsunami.